Delta. Welcome back to GMA3. News of President Trump's positive coronavirus test has sent the administration into a bit of a tailspin, scrambling to stem the spread of this deadly virus. But as of today, at least 24 people in President Trump's inner circle have tested positive. That virus forcing the president off the campaign trail with just 27 days left until Election Day. We want to bring in President Trump's National Press Secretary, Hogan Gidley. Thanks for being with us today, Hogan. And obviously the president is in quarantine right now. And uh, the outbreak there that we just mentioned among his staff there, among the White House, obviously changing the campaign strategy. You no longer can hold or he can no longer hold those signature public rallies. So how do you keep the momentum going? How has your campaign strategy had to shift? Well, the president wanted to employ Operation MAGA, and that's something we're doing over here at the campaign we're very excited about. And that's utilizing the assets of so many people across this country who are excited and enthusiastic about getting out and voting for this president. The vice president will make engagements, some live, some virtual. The first family is going to be out all over the country as well, also doing virtual events. And we have a lot of our coalitions, Black Voices for Trump, Latinos for Trump, Women for Trump bus tours hitting 12 states, blanketing uh, places we need to, to retain the White House and have another four years of peace and prosperity. So it's important that while the president is, is in quarantine, that we pick up the slack that's left behind and we're mo mobilizing all of our efforts to do just that. Do you have a target date for when the president is going to get back out there? I assume he's chomping at the bit to get back out there. No matter how many people and buses and campaigns, it's nothing like right. him being on the campaign trail. So what is the target date? And when he gets back out there, do we uh, expect to see him in a mask more often than we have? Well, you're right about one thing. He's ready to go right now. He doesn't want to stop at all, but the doctors obviously are dictating some of his schedule. Uh, they're going to determine when it's best for him to get out on the trail. He's prepared. He's ready. He's ready for the debate coming up in a couple of weeks in Miami as well. And so in the meantime, that's one of the reasons we're kind of out there doing our thing in, in full force so that the president can understand we're still fighting for him and, and fighting from now until Election Day to get the man reelected. But until that time, as he can get back out there, um, we're going to keep doing our thing on our side, but the president wants to be out. As you just said, he likes to talk directly to the American people. That message that he delivers without the filter of the mainstream media really resonates. It's uplifting. It's patriotic. Um, it's unifying. It's one of those things that really catapulted him to win the presidency back in 2016. That magic still exists. It's out there, and we're going to tap into it just as soon as the doctors allow the president to get out there and, and uh, do those speeches again. Will we see him wearing a mask doing those speeches? Uh, again, it depends on what the guidelines and the guidance says. Uh, the president wears masks often now. Uh, I was in the White House for three years before I came to the campaign and when COVID hit. We all socially distanced in the building. We weren't really near the president that much in close proximity. He wore masks when the doctors told him it was something that was necessary. And so let's not forget, the president of the United States was talking about masks on March 31st. We talked about the guidelines that were issued with the CDC from the White House briefing room on April 3rd. It was a month and five days later before members of the media all wore masks in the briefing room. But the way they tell it, it's like they were ringing in the new year on January 1st with an N95 mask sipping champagne. That's not the way it happened. The president was out in front on this. He led on this topic, led on this issue, and he wants people to be safe, socially distanced, wear their masks use hand sanitizer, uh, and that's what he's been talking about now for months and right, months. But have things changed, Hogan? Have things changed, though? Have, have you changed your guidelines given what's happening there among the staff at the White House with 24 people now known to be infected? Well, look, it's a serious issue. It's infected this, uh, infected this country. It's infected the world. This is something China did uh, to the globe. It was unprecedented. It was unforeseen. We acted very quickly in the White House to issue those guidelines to make sure the people kind of knew what they were dealing with. Remember, the science changed early on. But inside the White House, uh, they have always been very vigilant to make sure that the president, the vice president, the staff all looked after, all being safe. And the safety measures and the precautions put in place go to prevent the spread of this virus. Now, it's obvious people have gotten it in the White House, but this is an airborne virus, it's something we're dealing with. Uh, we're dealing with it in real time. Something, as I said before, that no one's ever seen before. This is this is something that's really um, gravely impacted so many lives. I mean, think of the lives lost, 200 plus thousand in this country alone. It's been devastating what China has done to the world. But this president, with his early actions, thanks, thankfully we now know, uh, because of Dr. Fauci, Dr. Birch, Dr. Han, and Dr. Redfield, his one decision to shut down travel from China and from Europe early on saved countless lives in this country. And while Joe Biden offers things he would do, 
There's not one thing he can say that he would have done differently, except for the one thing that would have made this much, much worse. He said he would not have shut down travel from those countries. In fact, he called it xenophobic and racist. And now we know the early predictions, two and a half million people dead in this country. One life is too many. 200,000 is egregious. But thankfully, because of this president's leadership, we're nowhere near that two and a half million number right now. Uh, Hogan, a lot of people would take issue with a lot of what you said, including the president taking this so seriously. I mean, yes, he mocked Vice President Biden for wearing a mask. And, and I hate to harp so much on masks at this point that we're six, seven, eight months into a pandemic and we're still arguing about whether or not a mask is a safe thing to do. We have seen countless pictures come out of the White House of there not being social distancing taking place, that people have been closed. We just saw that white, that the Rose Garden event uh, in which we, where it's now possible being called a super spreader. So I, I get what you're saying and, and I get you're, you're defending your guy and you're supposed to, but the pictures have been telling a bit of a different story. Story. And if all those precautions right. were taking place the way you say they are, I don't know if we'd still have an outbreak. The White House is being called a hot zone right now. Oh. Hogan, do you acknowledge that something has gone a little wrong versus just it's an airborne virus, that the proper precautions, maybe you should have been on this a little more than you were? A couple of things I'd take issue with there. First of all, to pretend as though Joe Biden follows his own mask mandates, absolutely ridiculous. We put out a lot of videos yesterday here from the campaign showing Joe Biden without a mask, but he seems not to follow science. Riding a bicycle with a mask, which the CDC says you shouldn't do, but he didn't have a helmet on, which of course every scientist would tell you would be very important to protecting your soul. Hogan, we're not so talking about helmets. Is, <laughs> second of all, no, but what I'm saying is, look, let's talk about the science here. Okay. Joe Biden has, has many times not worn his mask. And there have been a lot of Democrat governors, for example, uh, Northam is one of them. Uh, you can talk about uh, uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, the mayor of Atlanta, also came down with the virus too, and they wear masks all the, the time. The point I'm trying to make is this is an airborne virus, and it's something that this country has never experienced before. China did this to the world, and in real time, we learned early on masks didn't matter. They didn't help. Dr. Fauci said it many times. Uh, the Surgeon General made the same comments, Jerome Adams. And then all of a sudden the science shifted and it proved that masks did begin to work. So we all started wearing masks inside the White House. I was there when journalists would come into my office to have conversations, I'd put on a mask, they would put on a mask. So the, the whole conversation about masks is, is, is a good, good one that we should have, but we've all been wearing masks. The fact is it's tough to prevent a virus like this from spreading all over the country, but the measures we have put in place have prevented it from spreading much more egregiously than it already has. Hogan, let's talk about tonight's debate. There have been concerns about whether the vice president should be traveling at all for a number of reasons, not only uh, because of the president's positive test, but also you know, because of the fact that of the continuity of government. In the event the president could become more ill, shouldn't the vice president be taking extra precautions, potentially even isolating, given the situation there at the White House? Well, he is taking extra precautions. As you know, the White House Medical Unit looks after the president and the vice president. They are the best in the world. Um, they have done more to protect uh, presidents, both uh, uh, you know this one and past presidents, than, than anybody in history. I mean, the way they look after these people and their families is, is um, something to be commended. I mean, they are so brave. All those, those men and women I had the pleasure of working alongside for, for those many years, uh, you know, you just, you're in awe of what they can do. But the fact is, um, you know, the world moves on in a way in which the vice president wants to get out there as well. He wants to tell about the record setting successes that, that this president has been able to do for the American people, how the American people's lives are better, regardless of race, religion, color, or creed, the cause of President Trump's policies. So the president, um, you know, he's gonna be at the White House for a little bit, uh, but these vice presidential debates are something that happen all of the time, uh, every every cycle, and the, this one's gonna be no different. The precautions are being taken. I hear there's now plexiglass uh, at the event too. So regardless of, of what setup is, is on the debate, stage tonight, we think the vice president's going to, going to do really well, not just talking about the 47 year career of failure from Joe Biden, but about the 47 month uh, career in politics of success for this president. And the fact that Kamala Harris is one of the most radical people ever to be put on a ticket, uh, even more so than Bernie Sanders with her embrace of the Green New Deal and defunding police and abolishing ICE. 
those things would be seriously problematic for this country. And the vice president is going to outline that uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully in a, a really strong and powerful way tonight. Well, everybody will be watching. We know you will. We look forward to it tonight. Hope we can look forward to having you back here on GMA3. Hogan. Any, anytime. Thanks so much. Joe. All right, Appreciate Hogan it. Gidley, thank you so much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.